Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dennis and I'm going to be representing this Pips Matter Trading Chamber event. Um, I'm just going to quickly explain to you exactly what this event does. <clears throat> the workshop is not starting yet, I'm going to wait a little bit more for everybody else to come in. The session is being recorded, so you will be able to see everything that basically you missed out on and uh, catch up on anything that you might not understand. Um, I'd like to confirm that you can all hear me, so if you can hear me, just put a Y inside the chat box or a yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, so the trade, uh, trading chamber events are basically live trading uh, events where we open up live positions using live accounts, and most of the times we're going to be using different trading accounts. What I mean by this is that we're going to be using the different size and different leverage in the accounts. For example, on today's event, we're going to be using a smaller size account where we're going to be opening smaller positions and the leverage is 1 to 200 on the account. Uh, we do this so we can teach every, every type of trader how to trade. People who have hundreds in their accounts, people who have thousands and people who have hundreds of thousands. So we have uh, basically three different ways of trading. Conservative, medium, and aggressive. Uh, all these all this ways of trading are, are for different types of people and different types of characters. I'm going to come into quite a few different things that I'm going to speak about today. But once again, trade, uh, the trade, trading chamber is basically live trading. And from Monday, it will start twice a day. Now, the times are going to be for European session. So basically, once the UK and Euro session are open, we're going to be trading for about an hour max in a day. We're going to give out predictions of what's going to happen. And uh, you will be pleasantly impressed with the, uh, with the accuracy that we have. Um, and then the second time in the same day will be for the U.S. session. So once the U.S. session opens. So th th this way we can help out everyone in, in all ways. Um, the first thing that happens Central European time around 6 a.m. is a market analysis video and a written format. It will no longer be in PDF. It will be just on writing on our website accessible to all of you. This is a very short explanation of the market with a couple of trade ideas in there and basically what to look out for and some motivation and things like this. Um, the, second, the, the, the third thing that, that the trading chamber covers is high impact events such as today's FOMC. Now because we're running out of time for, for the FOMC, it's actually going to be 19 minutes, I'm going to start uh, basically I'm going to start this presentation and head on head on to everything else. Um, so what happened today? In line with our expectations, the Bank of Japan did not add any new monetary easing in today's meeting. It did surprise the markets a little bit uh, with, a, with a more than a, an hour delay. It was very frustrating to wake up at 5 in the morning and, and wait for, for these guys to, to decide what they're going to do. And uh, basically many people just waited for a good hour, maybe even more, for them to release the statements, what happened was um, the yen weakened substantially before seriously gaining strength later on in the European sessions. Now, the Bank of Japan did introduce a new and more flexible monetary policy framework in which it actually moves away from strictly targeting an increase in the monetary base to targeting the 10-year Japanese government bond yields bit. And this is very important. I'm going to go over this later on, or, or if we do not have time today, I'm going to go over it in tomorrow's market analysis. Finally, the Bank of Japan strengthened its forward guidance by committing itself to continue to buy assets under the CPI inflation rate, uh, which has actually increased to above 2%. This is all important, and as you see, JPY has strengthened across the board later on in the day. That means it's not against only the dollar, but also against the euro. Um, this means it continued the downtrend versus both of these pairs, and not only. Same goes against the CAD, the AUD, and everyone else. So we have a very strong yen across the board, and I believe that um, if our expectations are correct, that the Fed will not ease, and I'm going to go into that a little bit more pretty soon, you will see uh, price of USDJPY reach probably the 96, maybe even 94 level today. These are all guesses, though. We're going to go into facts pretty soon. So we're moving into what can happen today. Technically, the USD, uh, USD weakness could be expected in the next 15 minutes. What this means is, uh, on the technical side, we do see uh, weak USD. For example, we have 
many technical setups across across the board against the dollar that the dollar will be weak. We have a pa uh, very good patterns. We have a downtrend against the yen. We have an uptrend, a very strong uptrend in gold. We have uh, NZD, which I don't see much movement in the NZD today, and I'm going to be avoiding it because of the central um, the interest rate announcement, which is going to be coming out in about three hours from the, the Royal Bank of New Zealand. Uh, we have GBP USD, which is pretty much in a trading range, and right now uh, the pair is at, at the bottom of the range. That means it's either going to break below the, ninth, the one, 130 level, or it's going to head up to the 194 level. Um, so regardless of what happens today, definitely there will be big, big movement. Now, the US dollar has been weak throughout the, the UK session. Uh, that was expected, and we did announce this on our social media pages, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, you can always see prime and, and very quick information there if you do follow us on this um, on, on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, the USD did regain strength back when, when we entered the US session, and right now it's actually weakening a little bit, but very little bit because there is a lot of speculation of what's going to happen. I'm going to give you a couple of scenarios right now. One is they do not raise the interest rates, and we have a very uh, dovish meeting. What, mean, what this means is that the US dollar will weaken substantially, as the technical indications are showing that that will actually happen. Uh, we have another scenario where the, <clears throat> the Fed does not raise its interest rates, but does have a hawkish meeting and states that probably they will be raising the interest rates in the next meeting, uh, which will happen in December. This will weaken the dollar, but gain strength at the same time. Um, so basically, instability, which would make the dollar strong temporarily or weaken it temporarily and then vice versa, go the other way. Uh, these are the two scenarios that I believe most likely will happen. I do believe, and we have been forecasting for quite some time, that the Fed will not raise its interest rates. Now, if they do raise their interest rates, now here this is a very important subject and a very dangerous move that the Fed could make. The whole world is almost in negative rates right now. And the Fed, the US, is that is the only country with, with the positive interest rates. If they do raise them, there is a lot of instability coming up in November when the US presidential elections are. And if Trump wins those elections, well, it's going to be a very mixed bubble that's just going to blow up and it could cause a very strong recession in the world. Um, but I guess we the, the, uh, <clears throat> basically thinking of what's going to happen or talking about it is not going to make us money right now. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to go over two, two profitable things. Uh, two things that all profitable and successful traders I know have in common. One is a mindset and two is losses. If you want to be a successful trader, regardless of what kind of trader you want to be, you need to have losses and you will have losses. And if any of you are trading demo or live or paper trading, you definitely have losses by now. Um, the, the first point that I said, mindset. I spoke about that a lot yesterday, and if you haven't seen or attended the trend trading workshop, it's on our YouTube channel. Simply ch type in the search Pips Matter, and you'll see our little logo there with the eagle, and, and everything will pop up. We are running out of time, and the event is going to come up. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to move my chart to you very quickly, and I'm going to show you what we are trading. Can you see my chart? Just please tell me yes or no. Okay, great. So, uh, oops, I just, you lost it there for a second. I'm going to bring the chart back. Okay, so like I said, we're trading on a smaller account today. We do have other accounts on the other PCs and the traders at Pips Matter are managing those trades. But we do have many new traders in this workshop and it would be best to use a similar account towards theirs. So, um, Forget about forget about the current open trades. I'm going to just move this stop losses a bit down, and we're going to be opening live trades together. And once we finish with all of this, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be going over over what we spoke about recently. So just a second. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for me before we before we continue?
I'm going to have to restart my terminal. It's actually getting a bit freezy here. My, my computers haven't been switched off for, for a long time. Just give me a moment. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn my, my, my station right back on so we, can, so we can have this. So I'm going to quickly go over the technical aspects of trading. Fundamental-wise, there, there is just about a 10% um, in the, uh, basically a 10% uh, market prediction that the, the, the Fed, Federal Reserve will raise its interest rates. Now, it's very important to note that usually, and most of the time in these kind of events, the things that happen are exactly the opposite of what everyone else believes. So technically, I was very, very, very sure uh, that the dollar, the dollar will be very weak today. Now, the biggest problem we have with that is that the whole market, well, most of the market thinks so as well. And usually, that doesn't that doesn't really happen. Uh, <laughs> pretty, uh, that doesn't really happen correctly. Now, um, as you see, I'm going to show you technically how we have it. We have a very strong downtrend here, and you can see that even today's Japanese um, monetary policy was not good enough to to um, break this trend. There are strong indications that price will move down. Now, if the Fed delays in releasing its statement like the, like the Bank of Japan today, well, then we could have some trouble in, in, in the markets and, uh, and the, the lots of instability, basically, dollar will move. The, 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 the pair will move up and down, up and down, up and down rapidly. So the risk management we're using on this, and I'm going to show it, basically what, what we're doing is the capital on this account is 597. The risk we will take on these trades will only be 5%, which is very aggressive. That means if we open a 0 0.08 position on Euro USD, for example, uh, our maximum risk would be about 37 pips. Okay? So 0 0.08 would be about 37 pips. Since this is 0 0.01, we can increase the risks. Now, because we are about to approach this, I, I actually had a lot of things planned to talk about right now, well, in this, in, this, in this session, but we are only down to eight minutes, and I'd rather focus on the technical side. So I just want to show you very quickly what's going on here. Okay, my station is freezing again, and that's really not good. It's really not good. Okay. okay. I'm gonna have to restart it again. That's really not good. I should have restarted my computers before I started this, but I was extremely busy. Okay, um, now I guess I'm going to have to open the, the MT4 here. Just, just bear with me for a second everyone, I'm just going to try and stop a couple of things. Okay, I'm going to try and turn it back on. Just bear with me for a second. <clears throat> Turning it on now, and I think we're going to be okay. I stopped a lot of software here. Now, okay, so like I said, market predictions are that the dollar will be very weak right now. Now, this can, very, this can backfire. Many times it does backfire. And many times um, the things that happen in the market are exactly the opposite of what everyone expects. And many of the most successful traders, investors in this world have stated this as well. Um, I explained the moving averages a little bit yesterday. They are also indicating they are also indicating very strong selling indications. They could also go back up because these are daily charts. So I'm going to go to Euro USD and show you what I tried to show you before. Now 
we are exactly in the 50% of the trading range of these two of this basically this channel over here uh, we are in the trading range right about the 50% level of it this shows a little instability but that it does look like it's going to go on the upside what I can see happening here is price moves down and then shoots upwards this is one scenario that I believe could happen and USD JPY same thing price could reverse back up before dropping back down AUD USD already has recovered very they're very strong gains and we've given out this, uh, this, this trade over here we've given out this trade quite a few times well not quite a few times but we've given it out, out down here we've also given out many trades yesterday in our in our trend trading workshop and pretty much all of them are in the money except this one here this sell we gave this sell out yesterday we were expecting a head and shoulders formation this could begin tomorrow just so you know tomorrow or Friday prices could begin heading lower unless this level over here is broken okay usually it takes about two to three at a maximum of five days of stagnation before price moves down or up I told you not to touch this yesterday and today we indicated buying positions on gold gold has been in a strong uptrend since the beginning of this year and there is a very strong cup formation over here which indicates very strong movement upwards um, this over here when these two moving averages cross this can be a very strong indication of, of further movement up now what could happen as I said with other pairs this price moves down before heading up we are down to the last four minutes uh, well, basically of, 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 of before the monetary policy is released and I'd like to ask any of you do, do you any of you have any open trades right now on your live or demo accounts and what we're gonna do here is we're going to be compounding I'm gonna show you how to compound once the news comes out good bill that's really good that's really good that you closed everything very important to avoid this kind of events because there is lots of uncertainty in them um, there is a lot of points that I'm gonna go over once we go into this there are lots of points of uh, there is a lot of information here once everything's finished and that will happen right before um, the, the the press conference uh, yes Bill we, we are open on US on Euro USD on USD JPY we are open from a long time ago on AUD USD and gold uh, these are trend trades. The, the small account here is just we just added the trade the funds today into it and we started trading it as you see um, the, 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 It's just begun today. So all history all transactions. I mean it's just Everything's just begun today. So uh, We will we're leaving these positions open with sure stops everywhere with uh, and, and basically covering positions we're going to be covering positions once, move, once the, uh, once the, oh my God, bloody hell, uh, once the statement is released, <laughs> and that's happening in about two to three minutes. Like I said, we are quite, quite bearish on the USD, and we have been for quite some time. Um, there is USD strength right now in the market in the in the last couple of minutes. Uh, there will be there will be some strength from the dollar. And uh, basically everything else is fundamental. But like I said, all, all indications right now, every single thing in this market is indicating that, <clears throat> technically speaking, uh, that the, the, the announcement will actually be uh, weak on the dollar. Hawk, uh, basically, um, dollish versus the dollar. Uh, so we're, we're pretty close. We're just about two minutes maybe a little bit less but yeah, I don't know if you guys remember last year the Fed did release the statement 15 minutes early and that caused that caused a massive panic in the market if you remember sometime around this year when uh, Euro USD shot up I think like from 112 to 119 118 when they didn't change the monetary policy and prices kept going up 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 for about four or five days I, I know a lot of people who lost money that in those days because they kept selling 
when the big money was actually buying. Um, if, if it's your first time here, there is, a, there is a rule that, well, we have 23 rules that we use to trade. And one of them is basically um, that the, the idea here is to be just as ready to buy as we are to sell, especially on high impact events. We don't like trading these kind of events, but there are many people who like to trade them. And obviously we are here to make money. So uh, if there is an opportunity for us to buy or sell right now, we're going to take it. Um, we are never 100% sure on any kind of trade. The maximum we'll ever go is up to 20%, uh, 80%. Right now we are about 70% uh, sell USD and about 30% buy USD. But you have to understand that it's those smaller percentages that make us the most money. Obviously, always protecting our stops, uh, our, our positions is one of the most essential things we can do. And the only things we're going to be trading right now is Euro USD and USD JPY. If, if we do find an entry. Uh, there is volatility. Uh, the, well, there is a lot of volatility happening right now in the markets. <clears throat> okay, we're out. We should be out. Let's see what will happen. Um, like I said, technically, we are bullish on the dollar. Uh, sorry, bearish on the dollar. And the interest rates have not been changed, but like I said, the monetary policy could be in favor of the U.S. dollar. And we do see dollar strength, but very, very mixed signals right now in the market. Very mixed. And uh, let's see, probably the statement hasn't been released right yet, as of yet. But the interest rates have remained the same. We did state that this would probably happen, and pretty much the whole market did. But let's see what, what's going to happen. I, I think the dollar is going to weaken. Looks like it will. But since the whole market is versus the dollar, uh, trading against the dollar right now, uh, it, there could be a smaller, much smaller move than expected. Especially that lo most of the firepower went went out during the, the London trading session. But yet again, let's see. Perhaps, perhaps Yellen will move the market more than the actual statement. Because nothing's really happening right now. I mean, the dollar gained a little bit of strength versus the Canadian dollar. I can see that uh, happening. I mean, well, there's not much happening. Well, I think it's going to go down. As, as we predicted this, we've been stating this for quite some time. Uh, gold should be heading up. And not, but it looks like it will. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to just go to the weekly chart over here and I'm going to show you something very important. Once we go over our moving averages, I'm just going to remove all the mathematical points of interest so you can focus on the moving averages. Okay, so you see, when this, when well, first of all, when this white one crosses with our, with our 200 moving average, that indicates strong movement upwards. Uh, this is a simple A, B, C, Elliott wave uh, indication to buy. And then we have the first cross. We'll have the second cross of the red, which is the 55-day moving average, with the 200-day moving average. And uh, I'm going to go over that once everything finishes, because as, as I see, there's not much happening. Okay, well, Yellen will definitely move the markets. I don't see anything else happening right now. I think the dollar will weaken before Yellen speaks. Um, who do you guys trade? Which brokers do you use? Bill, what, what broker do you trade with?
Okay, I see your message, Bill. Well, you're right. You're absolutely right. I have I've seen that as well. But uh, I still doubt that I still doubt that uh, there will be a hike this year. Even though, as you say, there are 14 out of 17 members are seeing one hike this year. I still doubt that this will happen. I, I really, because the elections are going to provide so much instability um, to the to the U.S. economy, right? Good. And how's Axie Trader doing for you? Do you use an MT4? Or is it, do they what what platforms do they provide? Okay, very good. Well, we 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 trade on. Oh, <laughs> have you been here? You love Limassol. Well, I love it too. It's it's a very beautiful place. Well, uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be. The Atlantic Miramar. It's a nice hotel. It's actually quite close to our office. It's very close to our office. It's about uh, ten minutes drive. I'm going to be opening two positions right now, uh, based on pure technical reasons, and I'm going to be opening USDJPY 0 0.05. That's what I'm doing, based on the based on the risk management that we're taking. Um, I'm just going to open the risk management calculator real quick. Okay, I'm going to be buying gold as well, and I'm only going to be doing that with 0 0.02, and I'm going to add in my stops right now. So, uh, the balance is 591, 591, the risk I'm taking with 0 0.05 on my USDJPY with 81 pips in profit, uh, sorry, with, uh, with 81 with an 81 pip stop loss should be about 6% so we're actually going to lower that to about 15, to about 60 which should be about 5% yeah that's 59.1 pips is exactly 5% um, gold 0 0.02 0.02 1,470 is 5 percent. No take profits. I'm going to be compounding these two trades as they move into profit. Um, we'll leave this Euro USD trade here. We'll leave this open. Uh, weakness in the US dollar has already started, and I think we are going to have a good day in trading today. Okay, so Yellen, Yellen will probably, look, here's another reason why I think that the dollar will actually be strong, because central bankers play around with each other. Let's say Yellen will weaken the dollar, and then Draghi speaks on Tuesday, on Thursday, which is tomorrow, and he picks, well, basically, he weakens the euro. You understand? They stabilize each other. They back each other up. It sounds, it sounds like it's not true. It sounds... It sounds like it sounds like a game, right? But that's exactly how it is. If you pay attention to the markets, I, I, that's what I do. I sit down and I learn as much as possible, and I look at history as much as possible to understand what's happening with different, um, well, with different basically uh, news events and how they affect the markets. So far, well, I, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad we, we see eye to eye, Bill. Um, so far, and, and you can check our basically our um, research and analysis pages. Ever since we started this firm, every single NFP prediction has been correct. That's not. Uh, I'm not saying that we are wizards or some kind of magicians, but I basically the systems we use we base them on 80% technical, 20% fundamental. And I said yesterday that most of the time we traded fundamentally, we actually lost. Now, there, I know traders who just use fundamental analysis, who use fundamental analysis, and I know traders who just use technical analysis. Uh, and all of them win money. 
I mean, they've all made money, uh, regardless of what kind of system they're using. So I'm no one to judge what kind, what, what how you trade, what systems you believe in. That's your own beliefs, and uh, I, I believe that, that you know, I, I, I've seen people make money with just two moving averages, and I've seen uh, I've seen people make money with absolutely no chart, just fundamental trading, and not once, but on a consistent basis. And that's I believe that's what's most important when it comes to trading. Um, so we are we are mainly we are mainly uh, technical over here. We do look at fundamentals, and very soon I'm going to show you what we do uh, with compounding. So this is 0 0.05. The next trade is going to be 0 0.03. We're moving on to gold. Gold is 0 0.02. We're going to open 0 0.01, and we're going to do that now. And what I'm going to do that I'm going to put a stop loss right here, and I'm going to move this stop loss into profit. So this is making 390, and this is losing 187. Regardless of what happens, I'm going to make money on this. I'm protecting myself. Uh, that's the reason I'm opening a smaller position. Well, I'm really glad. I'm really glad about that bill. Uh, this is just the beginning, and it's very hard to, to trade this kind of events. You know, and it's... it's uh, um, Basically, there are two types of market movements on, on high impact events. There are normal market movements. Basically, this is a normal market move. Price comes up to the trend line and moves down from it. And then, uh, well, let's say there is a breakout and it continues breaking out. These are normal market moves. Um, an abnormal move would be Yellen starts speaking now and the price just shoots up, takes us totally out of the game, and then just, just drops back down. Uh, so I'm going to explain this better next time, but I'm going to be opening a next position, 0 0.03 here, and I'm going to have to move into a smaller time frame because I'm actually compounding on, I shouldn't be compounding so so quick, but for the sake of showing everyone how to do it, um, I got the better of me. So here we're winning 8.65 and here we're losing 3.43. So basically we are staying on top. And uh, that's one of the laws we follow. There are three laws that, that complete our trading system. One, the law of compounding. This is it. Explain better next time. And then the second law is the law of averages. Basically, time shows pretty much everything. And the third law is the law of cause and effect. Basically, for every effect in the financial markets or in life, there are usually causes for this. Um, I can I can only compound here with 0 0.01. The idea of compounding, the way we do it, is opening is opening a, let's say a bigger position and then just another smaller position right right after it in order to actually have a profit because here you're making nothing. But anyway, it's still better to protect to protect your profits than than actually um, it's better to take a small loss than a big loss. Uh, the idea with trading is well, our idea with trading is to compound as much as possible and well, make as much money as possible. And we could get stopped out because obviously Yellen didn't start speaking yet. There is quite some time before she starts speaking and the market will fluctuate up and down, but I can see it continuing on the upside. We might get stopped out over here. Well, on all trades we might get stopped out. I think we're already no, we didn't get stopped out on gold yet. I think gold is the only one that will actually continue heading higher. And the movement today is not, well, it's 2,000 pips, points, Okay, well, we took a chance. So I'm going to just remove the chart right now, and I'm going to continue with the following points. Um, the reason I'm continuing with these points is because I want you to open up your eyes towards what could make you money and what could lose you money. So I'm going to give you six sure reasons why people have lost money in the markets. The first one is many traders trade without an actual plan. They trade blindly. They do not have a definite specific risk uh, and money, uh, basically a money management and risk management system. Uh, they have zero profit objectives before they start trading. Their only trading idea is, I'm going to make money. So, and that's not a real plan, right? So, uh, making money is not a plan. Yeah, and even if they establish a plan, many times they actually second guess that plan. Because, you know, today that plan might not, not work out, so they start tweaking it, start changing it, start doing things around. Um, now, believe me, many, many months we have uh, well, I personally have a, uh, a win percentage of, let's say, 40% or 20%, but I'm still on top. And I explained that in two, two webinars ago. 
So even if they have an established plan, they second guess that plan, and they second guess it, and they don't stick to it, especially when they lose trades. Point number two is many traders do not realize the news they hear uh, and read. Basically, many traders don't realize that the news they hear and read has, in many cases, already been discounted and nobody really cares about it. It's that idea that if, if you see it on the television, it's already too late. If you see it on Forex Factory or, or Investing.com or Bloomberg or anywhere else, it's probably already too late to make money. But what I'd actually like to do is skip through, skip through this and come back to this later and speak of something more important, such as this, high impact events. Just as the rule I stated yesterday in our trend trading workshop, on high impact events, you need to be just as ready to buy long as you are to sell short. The objective in trading is not to be correct. Everyone's objective should be to make money and not be right. I explained this yesterday very well, and if you guys have about 50 minutes of well, during your weekend or today or tomorrow, just head over to our YouTube, YouTube channel, which is Pips Matter, and you'll find a lot of information there that could actually uh, well, boost, boost your trend trading abilities and, and well, everything else. Um, okay, so uh, this point number two is don't think about what the market is actually going to do. You have absolutely zero control over that. Think about what you're going to do once the market starts moving. Once the market goes to a certain level, uh, a mathematical point of interest, maybe a moving average or somewhere. Once the market gets there, what are you going to do about it? Don't try to predict the future. You have no glass ball. You have no magical powers. And if you do, uh, well, then good for you. But I, I know I don't, so th these rules have to stick with me. Uh, point number three is being wrong is very acceptable. Staying wrong is absolutely stupid. And excuse me for, for speaking this way. Um, sorry, I just have to add on to my positions. Just give me a moment. Oh. Okay, so, and point number four is losses are a cost of doing business. Regardless of what kind of business you're in, sometimes you're going to make losses, especially in the beginning. No one can be right all the time, and no one can make money all the time. I've lost lots of money during my trading career, but, um, you know, <laughs> I've also made money. Simon, hi. Yes, Simon, it is being recorded. They're definitely being recorded, and everybody will receive an email tomorrow uh, with all, all the information relating, well, pretty much everything to do with this. Um, sorry, I just have to open another position on another account. Just, just give me a second. Before Yellow starts speaking, I'm going to go back to the chart so everybody can stick with me there. I am still under the belief that uh, the dollar will be weak. Thanks, Simon. It's really good to see you too. I really look forward to speaking to you soon. Just a moment, everyone. Just, just open a couple of positions. Okay. So, uh, let's go to the next point. The best way to use stop losses. I've said this yesterday, but we do have a couple of new people here, so I'm going to go over this again. The best way to use stop losses is to first determine um, an area in the market that if the price will reach that area, you will be proven wrong on that trade idea. Now, once you find that level, then you use your risk management formula. And if you don't have one, we're going to give everyone this, uh, this formula. Uh, after the session, um, basically you determine the size of your trade based on your stop loss. By determining the size of your trade, you can determine, <coughs> excuse me, you can determine uh, your risk, the risk you are willing to take. Now, once all of this is done, you open your position, and the first thing you do is you add your stop loss, and you never remove your stop loss. Uh, the stop loss is there for 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 a specific reason. The reason we don't move a stop loss, the reason we forget about the stop loss is because we employ the stop loss. And when you employ someone, you let them do their job. One of the many rules that profitable traders follow is that they cut their losses short. 
and the only objective traders have in this market is to make money and not be correct. And that should be your objective too. You're here to make money. To make money, you need to learn a lot. And, and, and if you, excuse me if I swear, sometimes it's just to get my point across. I might swear in this session, um, just to prove a point. <clears throat> now the simple trick is this. Decide how much you're willing to lose on each and every trade and stick to it. If you're not comfortable losing $100, then don't try and win. Well, don't try and risk $100. That would be the stupidest thing you could do. If you're not comfortable with losing $1,000, well, then don't risk $1,000. Risk much less. Trade with what you're comfortable, not with what you, you know, imagine you could do. <clears throat> Here are some of the rules of our system, System 23. First point is, and the most important one of the most important one is always and always, always use a stop loss. Once a trade is open, add a stop loss to an area that it reached will mean you're wrong. Okay? The biggest point I can associate to this is never ever cancel a stop loss. Point number two, don't let profits turn into losses. Moving your stop loss into profits is always a very good idea. Having a certain area or a profit target to move your stop loss to, once your trade is, is in positive, and in green will help you grow and secure profits and that way you will be able to pay for your losses. That's the number one idea of making profits. So you can pay for your losses. And the way you can pay for your losses is by having smaller losses and bigger profits. <clears throat> um, point number three is look at prices. Don't rely on information you see on the television or hear from others, or see on websites, or market commentators, or some fool sitting in a, in a basement giving out trading signals. <clears throat> Next point, always use risk management. Never risk more than 2% on an aggressive trade. I did contradict that today with using a 5% risk. 2 to 5 is totally fine. And I'm going to explain to you why you should not risk more than 2%. Think of it this way. <clears throat> 5 times 5 is 25, right? So if you lose five consecutive trades on a 5% risk management, you're already losing a quarter of your account. Wouldn't you say that's a bit silly? Um, being down about 10%, 12%, 8% is totally manageable. Even 20% is fine. Those, those numbers you can easily <clears throat> bring back. Those not, that, that money you can easily make back. But when you're down 30%, 40%, 50%, now that's when you're in deep trouble. That's hard to get out of. Point number uh, three in this, in, this, in this part is avoid taking small profits and big losses. You're going to go broke doing this. I've seen many traders do this. They all take small profits and huge losses. Small profits, huge losses. And I know of people who have 94%. This guy, I'll never forget about this guy. This one guy had a 94% win ratio and he kept losing all of his money every single month. When I worked in a brokerage, he kept investing every single month. He had a 94% win ratio and he was broke every month <clears throat> because he kept winning five pips, six pips, seven pips, eight pips, nine pips, maximum 20 pips, let's say, when he was lucky or when he wouldn't pay attention to the trade so he wouldn't close it. He was scalping. He kept scalping, 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 and that scalping killed him because he would take big losses and small profits. And that's the most, that's the biggest recipe for disaster you can have. And the final point I want to explain to you here is that if you want to earn big, you need to get comfortable with big drawdowns. That's what you need to get comfortable with. If you want to make money in this market, you need to be comfortable with big drawdowns. It's the only way. It's the only way you can make big money, big drawdowns. Or the second way is compound. Start small and compound, compound, compound. But you got to learn how to compound properly. You can't just do it. The bottom line is this. Money management techniques can greatly enhance your trading by eliminating your emotions and reducing the risk. The market is actually retracing, by the way, now, if any of you are focusing on this. Not by much. Not by much. By just little. It's uh, it's retracing and uh, it's basically getting ready for yellow. <clears throat> Point number two, making mistakes is human nature. Once you realize this, you're going to find it a lot easier to move on and learn from your mistakes and losses. 
rather than keep doing them over and over again. And the last point I want to talk about is always use the risk management calculator. This will be given to you and sent to you once everything is finished. Um, okay, so let's go back to the chart. We did get stopped out on a couple of positions, such as the gold one. Made a very small, very small profit, but at least at least we didn't lose money. And that's 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 essential. Um, does anybody have a question for me before before I continue? Do, do you guys find this helpful, what I'm talking about today? And is anybody opening any trades? Well, actually, do you find it helpful first? Awesome. Good. I'm very glad. Okay, Jan is about to start speaking. Uh, we have just about five minutes, and I'm going to go quickly over over this. Um, so I said the two points. I'm going over the point point number three. That is, after several profitable trades, many newcomers and many people that actually lose money, they become very wild and unconservative. They base their trades uh, on on emotions and hunches and long shots rather than sound fundamental and technical reasoning. Or they put their money into those ideas that just can't fail. You know, they really feel that the market's going to go down, and they just start opening like crazy without any kind of risk management or any kind of um, definite goals. For example, a complete trading system. A complete trading system has many factors, but it also has a definite entry and exit um, system. Let's say it tells you exactly what needs to happen for you to enter a position. And it also tells you exactly what you need to do to exit the position. One of those things is adding stop losses. Believe me, if you don't add stop losses, you, you can definitely you can be destroyed by the market one day. Um, just a sec. So point number four is traders often oh, traders often try to carry too much uh, carry too big. Uh, positions with too little capital. Let's say somebody has $1,000 invested in the market and they start opening 0 0.01. That's not, uh, not 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.5. These are huge numbers. The, two of these trades can kill your account, even one. So uh, risk management is one of the most important and essential parts that you need to follow when it comes to trading. Point number five is some traders try to beat the market. By day trading, nervous scalping, and obviously getting greedy. Day trading, when done properly, can be extremely profitable. Um, scalping, I don't think it can be very profitable. It can in the short run. It can have an excellent track record. But then it comes that one loss. And that one loss destroys all of your profits and possibly even more. And number six, and the final point, they fail to predefine their risks. They keep adding to losing positions. And they fail to use stop losses. So that's it. Uh, we're waiting for Yellen now, and uh, let's see what what what's going to happen in the markets once Yellen starts talking.
So uh, if you head over to our website and you click on Trading Chamber, you're actually going to find 50 events for the next 50 days. You can register for any of those uh, or you can watch their live recordings, but I don't think you'll be able to make use of them after the information is done. Um, like I said, in those in those uh, trading chambers, we, we will be hosting them twice a day. That means morning time, uh, Central European time, morning time, when the UK and uh, uh, European sessions overlap, and when the UK and US sessions overlap. Basically, when news, news is coming out, uh, when, well, things, when, when stuff's happening in the market. And what we're going to do is we're going to provide uh, trading information trades, things like this that we're going to be taking uh, with the risk specific risk management. So if you're there and you tell me, hey, Dennis, um, you know, I have this much in my account and I'm interested in opening this trade. What kind of risk management do you, want? Do you advise me to take? Well, then I'm going to pull out the calculator. I'm going to look everything over and I'm going to show you exactly what you could do so you can sleep well at night. Um, I know many people who open positions wildly without any kind of risk management and uh, take seriously big losses that end up destroying their accounts and, and their personal freedom. Personal freedom is one of the most important things you can have when it comes to trading. That means a clean mind, the ability to think for yourself. That's where our NLP sessions help you. Yes, we also work with that, psychology. Uh, psychology is very important um, for us. Now, as you guys, if you're watching the charts, you can see that euro USD is, uh, the, well, the dollar is gaining strength now. I don't think Jan started speaking yet. Uh, does anybody know she started speaking yet? I really don't care what she's going to say because everything's lagging. And by the time she says it, it's pretty much already too late. I can just see that the market's moving rapidly, so I think something's happening. Bill, are you watching Yellen? Okay, good. So Jan's talking. Let's see what she's going to do. And it's pretty much a wait and see right now. Uh, I don't think she can drop a really big bombshell. The market's moved, not moving much. And I think I think tomorrow we will have side effects of the movement. Or when she finishes speaking. But I can see that the, the dollar is definitely strengthening. Sorry, I'm not speaking, I'm just waiting to see what, what's going to happen. I can see that the dollar is gaining decent strength, recovering all of its losses. Almost, well, it's actually negative territory versus the euro right now. Gold should be going down as well. Yeah, silver. I don't see anything special happening yet. These are very small moves. Well, they're not small, they're slow moves. Okay. 
Okay, thanks for keeping us posted. Bill, Bill says that there's nothing new yet. She's upbeat on, on, on the labor market. But, uh, I, I, uh, okay, if she, she's talking about the labor market, that's good for us. Anyway, I still kind of think, uh, I still kind of think, I still kind of think that the dollar will be weak. See, they are saying that the, uh, the Federal Reserve says that the, the, the 2016 hike is still likely, exactly what Bill said. So it's very, it's very careful language. Um, I think that due to the, due to the um, presidential elections, I do not think that the, the, the U.S. government, the, the Federal Reserve will be raising its interest rates. And I, I really think that that's, that's a really long shot or something happening there. And uh, if you go on our website and you see and you see the slider with the bull and it says we are long term buy, ask us why. There is a video coming on this and it's showing how how we are upbeat on buying gold. We are actually targeting gold to 2,000 and we're very very um, bearish on the USD. So we're pretty much our long term positions are all versus the dollar buying versus the dollar. So basically we're buying euro dollar. We're selling USD JPY. We've been doing that for some time. We're buying gold. Um, we're not touching NZD USD. We haven't been touching it, even though it's going up. Um, silver. We're buying silver and we're selling USD CAD and other pairs. You, you, you guys get the drift. I did expect much more movement uh, from, from the Federal Reserve, but like I said, most of the movement already happened uh, throughout the, the European and UK session. The dollar lost quite a bit of value there. Um, and I think it's going to lose throughout the night as well. Once Yellen finishes, I think the dollar will lose value. I think these are good entries to, to, to rebuy versus the dollar. Um, you can see the, the dollar uh, you're losing strength now again. Not much, but a little bit. Uh, I've re-entered some gold positions. I think USD CAD would be a good sell as well. Uh, it, it's, it was right at the top over there. And there are quite a few good indications on, on, on selling. And we already have a small sell position here. I'm not going to re-enter another sell there. Okay. Well. We're slowly moving into profits in our other positions.
USDJ. So we're buying Euro USD and we're buying USDJ, uh, USDJ why we're selling. Okay, well, Bill, Bill says, Fed Chair, uh, Fed Chair Yellen says that the decision to remain on hold was due to the slack in the labor market and inflation continuing to run below target. Yes, that is very, 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 very correct. Um, that's, that's actually, we released, we released a point of, of, I think, two days ago on six reasons, six reasons why the Fed won't raise its interest rates. Uh, you can see that on our website. There is a there is a PDF on it as well. It says six reasons, and and two of the reasons were were uh, the labor market because since 2014 it's actually becoming worse, and inflation it's nowhere near its target. I really don't get why the C Trader platform is, is is getting stuck so much. Okay, well, we are buying buying uh, again versus the dollar. We re-entered positions, and I'm going to put leave screenshot because the, this platform is getting stuck while I'm using the other PC. I can actually take a picture and put it on our on our on our Twitter account just so you can see that right now. I'll show the the, the good values. Okay, it's up. Yes, Bill, please go on to questions because uh, I, I don't see much happening with the markets right now. And we're, we are buying your, we're buying everything versus the dollar right now, and that's pretty much it. But go on with your questions. Yeah. Oh, you mean, you mean, you mean Yellen is having questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well that, that should that should cause a little volatility. Uh, yeah, I need to I need to shut down the Okay, well, once the once the questions when the questions are over with Yellen, I think we're going to call this a night. Um, we will release a better report tomorrow and everything, but as things stand, and especially that Bill helped us out by stating that their uh, that uh, Yellen, the decision to remain on hold was due to labor market and and inflation. Well, these are very good things for us, and that only means that uh, that um, the dollar will will continue to be weak. I will add on to these positions. Um, okay. So over the weekend, uh, we will be creating a video on, on, on System 23 and exactly how we use the system. We will show you, we will show you our track records of, of trading and how we've used the system to make money. Well, how I've used the system to make money for myself for a very long time. And now the team here is using the system very well. And uh, yeah, things are looking really good.
Okay, Capto, I will, I will, I will review that right now. As soon as the the session finishes, I will, I will review, I will review that about the the trading chamber. I will review that. I will review that and I will check everything. By the way, I was trying to call you today on your on your phone, but it kept saying that the number I was calling was wrong. Can you add me your Skype address, please? And then I will add you on Skype. Is that the is that your Skype address, Kato? Okay, so I will I will add you there and I will call you as well. Um, okay, everyone, uh, I'd like to thank you all for coming to this session. If you have any questions, I will I will I will stay online for. For a few more minutes. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, Kato, thank you for telling me about the registration for the trading chamber. I will I will get get on that pretty soon and have everything fixed. In regards to in regards to trading, I can I can see the dollar weakening throughout tomorrow's session. I can see if 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 Euro USD heads higher, I believe that Draghi will probably push it lower. Um, we are. Our idea is range bound for the next maybe 20, 30 days. Uh, that means Euro USD going up and down before breaking upwards. Our indications are that Euro USD will head up. USD JPY, we've stated this in the in, in the video yesterday, it will go down. Gold heading up, AUD USD heading up, especially after it breaks this range, heading much, much higher. Euro JPY heading down to the oops. Euro JPY heading down to the 110 area. Oh, sorry, yes, 110 area before moving lower. Euro GBP possible head and shoulders over here. Very strong indication of movement downwards, but long term upwards, heading up to the 90.90 area up here. New Zealand US dollar, it's an uptrend. Um, we're not going to touch it yet, but it's going up. GBP USD range bound. That means up, down, up, down, up, down. Pretty soon heading up again. Maybe a little down and then up. Gold. I've stated this already. Up. This. No touch. WTI heading up. USD CAD heading down. Silver heading up. USD Swiss franc range bound. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Already went over this. S&P 500, we'll not talk about this now. Russian ruble, we'll not talk about this now. Norwegian crown, we're not talking about this now. So, uh, if you watched yesterday, and if you followed any of the trades I would, I would have given out, you would have only been in the red on only one, and you would probably still be in that trade, and that would be Euro GBP. It hasn't moved much up or down. It's pretty much been steady. We did tell you to sell it. Well, we didn't say we would sell it. You could follow um, the rest of the trades have all been green, and if you watch yesterday's workshop, it, you will clearly see the prices where I said that what would happen. So, thank you all for coming. I realize nobody has any questions, and that means uh, you all understood everything, which is excellent. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for having you here, Kato, as well, and I'm really happy for that, and I really look forward to talking to you, believe me. Um, everyone else, thank you so much for coming. Bill, really nice to meet you. I really look forward to meeting you better. Um, and everyone else, thanks a lot for coming. Well, thank you. Thank you. You've, you, you, you've been of excellent help too, Bill. You've helped us out a lot. So, I wish everyone an excellent evening, morning, or afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, I look forward to that, Bill. You have a good day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.